Okay, um, so once you've created your Duotone um, version of your image, um, we're going to then start working on it in Illustrator. Um, so you need to open up a new A4 document um, and file place um, your saved version of your Duotone um, work. I'm just scaling it down to fit my A4 page. Um, so then what you're going to do is um, open up a new layer, making sure you lock your background layer, um, really get in the habit of doing that so that you're not accidentally drawing on that background layer. Um, and then using the pen tool, um, you're going to start to, in a similar way to how you worked with um, shape, you're going to start to um, draw around some of your key shapes. Um, oh, what you are going to need to do is make sure that your fill is set to none. Um, you can set your stroke if you want, but what you're going to do to make sure you get the right sort of colour fill is use your eyedropper tool um, and then you can start to build it up. Um, if there are, um, if I go back to none for a sec, if there's points that you think actually that isn't the path um, that my shape takes, obviously you can go back and re-edit it. You are going to be working with lots of layers in this, so you're going to build it up um, layer by layer, shape by shape, and you can obviously turn the visibility off of layers as you come to build the next shape and the next layer. Um, gradually, um, and obviously depending on how much detail you choose to include, you will create a tonal version of your illustration um, and you can add further detail you can change your brushes um, to add pieces into the foreground um, what I would say is when it comes to um, some of the more complex shapes such as like on this image the ivy leaves um, so let me just create a new layer for the ivy leaves um, there. If I zoom in, what I can do is um, just draw around one ivy leaf. Let me just swap that because I can't see where I'm going. So I'm doing it quite quickly for demonstration purposes, but I'm getting the rough shape of one. And then if I use my black arrow tool, I can um, control C and control V. Oh, I haven't selected the whole shape. Let me just make sure I've got the whole shape selected. Control C, control V. And with that, you can obviously change the scale. You can change the um, angle of it. Um, you could change the um, fill shape. So this one, for example, might be a very dark ivy leaf. And then if I go back to this one, um, I might make it a bit of a lighter ivy leaf. And then gradually you can build these shapes up. So there's no need to necessarily redraw each individual shape. Once you've got maybe two or three, you can cluster them together with your black arrow tool and copy um, and paste them um, it's really important that you are using the eyedropper tool so that your palette is true um, to your original um, duotone image. Um, do uh, explore different opacities within your layers. So if I go back here to my ivy leaf, um, if I want this layer to be a little bit more opaque, um, then obviously I can use the slider to explore revealing some of what is hidden behind um, accordingly. Um, so we'll leave you to get on with that. Um, what we would also suggest as a 
sort of cheap version um, that you might want to explore is to revisit the image trace. Um, so if I just delete <coughs> my drawn layers and I've got my uh, placed image, then I can obviously go up to my image trace and I could try the three tone version. It's reading lots of information. So we have here the image trace version. I think it's not quite as accurate. Um, if you look at the slideshow, which I did spend a bit more time on, the, the hand-drawn method, you're making artistic decisions about what to um, draw, what not to draw, and you're being a bit more specific in your color palette. Um, but obviously, this is um, an option that you could explore if you um, feel it's more appropriate for the work that you're doing. We'll just see what the six color version comes out like and then I'll hand over to you. Yes, yeah, so maybe that's a bit better actually, the six color version. Um, do remember to save it again. So um, export as a JPEG. Um, so file, um, export, um, export as, and you'll save it as a JPEG um, because uh, in that way you can bring it back into Photoshop for the next step of further edits.